Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about how we can use the i and j unit vectors to help us find the given transformation matrix. So I'll timestamp the different parts of the video below, but to start off with we'll look at how this works, uh, and then in the second part we'll look at an example too. So if this is useful please do like and subscribe. Okay, so let's see why it is we're only really interested in our unit vectors when we're looking at how to find a transformation matrix. So let's first look at the unit square, and I'm going to apply a generic transformation M to the unit square. And so to find out what happens, I'm going to take my transformation matrix and multiply it by each of the vertices of the unit square. So the point 0, 0, the point 1, 0, the point 0, 1, and the point 1, 1. Now when we multiply this out, we get a new matrix, 0, 0, AC, BD, and A plus B, C plus D. Okay, so let's see what this means. So under the transformation, you'll notice that the origin, or the point 0, 0, remains fixed. Okay, and this is a fact. The origin is always mapped to itself under a linear transformation. And so because of this, okay, because the origin can't move, it always remains fixed or invariant, it stays the same. What that means is that we can't perform translations using matrices because we can't shift the origin away from itself. It's always going to be fixed. Next, let's look at the point 1, 0. This is our I unit vector. And you'll notice it gets transformed to the point AC, which happens to be the first column of our transformation matrix. And so I could use this, okay, to help me find a transformation matrix because I could say, what happens to the point one zero under the transformation? And say it moves to the coordinates, I don't know, zero one. Well, then I know that my transformation matrix will have the first column as zero one. Okay, let's now look at my point zero one, which is my uh, J unit vector. Well, under the transformation matrix M, it becomes the point BD, which happens to be my second column of my transformation matrix okay and so I could say well say I want to describe a transformation uh, I could look at the point zero one and wherever it ends up that would be the second column of my transformation matrix and so hopefully you can see now that it's enough to just look at the point one zero and the point zero one and wherever they end up I can use that to define my transformation matrix so let's look at an example here. So we're asked to find the matrix M, which describes a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so let's think. Under the trans, uh, transformation, which is a reflection in the x-axis, so a reflection in this axis here, well, the point 1, 0, that's just going to stay at 1, 0. It's not going to move. So the first column is going to be 1, 0. Let's look at what happens to the point 0, 1. Well, that's going to be moved down here, isn't it, to the new coordinates, 0, negative 1. And so the second column of this matrix is going to be 0, negative 1. And just like that, we found a matrix M, which describes a reflection in the x-axis. And in the next few videos, we're going to be using this fact to find more reflection uh, matrices, um, rotational matrices, stretch enlargement matrices, and much more. Okay, So this is a really useful skill to know. Hopefully this video was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe and go over to my channel where I have tons of other maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.